Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We are doing a story time. I am going to be telling you guys my experience with Arbonne and what led up to and what made me ultimately quit. Before we get into anything, I really just want to make a quick disclaimer and say that this video is in no way intended to be hateful. I'm not here to bash Arbonne. I'm not here to say, you know, don't buy their products, run away, they're terrible. I mean, that's up to you, but... I'm, I'm not saying it. Out of respect for everyone's privacy, I will be blurring out their faces and pictures I include in this video, and I'm also not going to be naming any names. I just feel like that's not the right thing to do here, because like I said, this is not meant to be a hateful, bashing video. I'm not here to scream at you that Arbonne sucks. I just want to tell y'all what my experience was like and kind of what went wrong. If y'all are interested in hearing my journey with Arbonne and what led up to me ultimately walking away from the company, let's get right to it. I had actually heard of Arbonne for the first time when I was in high school. My friend's mom sold Arbonne and I was battling really bad acne and she had some skincare products that she loaned me essentially to borrow, which was so incredibly kind of her. She basically said, here, try these out. If these work for you, fantastic. We can get them for you. If not, I'll help you find something else. And that's kind of where my first introduction to Arbonne was. And then, you know, as social media became more of a presence in my life, I started finding all of, you know, the ENVPs and the NVPs and the RVPs. I was like, wow, that's really cool. Like, what do those girls do? And I never really got into it until a friend of mine from high school joined. And she had posted on her Snapchat that she was getting on a call that night with her sponsor. She asked me if I wanted to join the call, and I ended up saying yes. I really wanted to hear about it. And Christopher and I were in the car, and I had the whole thing on speakerphone. And we were both just like listening in and kind of hearing about the opportunity. Mind you, this was before we got engaged. We were just dating, but we were living together. So anything that I ate or any sort of, you know, healthy diet, detox, whatever that I did, he did too. So if I was going to do something like that, I wanted to make sure that he was interested in trying the products as well. So basically we sat through the 30, 45 minute phone call, Skype call. I don't really remember what it was. I honestly think it was Zoom. At the end of it, I was really interested. I was like, wow, like I want to earn a Benz. You know, I want to go on these vacations. I want to make $20,000 a month. Like that's insane. If anybody can do it truly, I can definitely do it. I asked how much it was and I about threw up. The 30 day detox is $444. When you sign up to be a consultant, you have to pay, I think it's like 50 bucks to become one, but then you get it for 222. So um, being that I was poor as dirt, me and Chris were like, this isn't gonna work for us. Like we, we can't do that. Like maybe we could pay the $50 sign up fee, but what's the point of signing up if you don't try the products? How are you gonna sell things you don't, that you've never tried? So we kind of just sat on it for a minute. And I had expressed that with the person that I was going back and forth with. And I was like, look, I just don't have the money for it. Like, I had just turned 20. I didn't know how to manage money. I had just moved into my first place. And I was kind of just in a hot mess of a situation. But back then, in October of 2018, I was severely overweight. Severely unhappy. Having so many issues with my body and you know, my self image and all these different things that if these women were truly, you know, losing weight and living their best life, making this insane lifestyle for themselves, why couldn't I do it? Diets had never worked for me in the past, but maybe this would be different. When I expressed that I was really concerned about the money, um, the, the response was, put on your credit card. Do you have a credit card? You know, ask Chris to pay for some of it. Can you ask your dad? Like, it wasn't a, oh, you know what, I understand it is really expensive. Here, let's find some better alternatives. It was, let's find a way to make you be able to afford this. I was so naive. And to me, that felt like, wow, like, they want me to do this. They believe that I can earn the bends. And I was so excited, so I was like, heck yeah. Like, Chris and I scraped together every last penny we had, and we placed that almost $400 order, and we got my 30 Days to Healthy Living Kit, and we got a few other things, and... I was so excited and Christopher has always been my biggest supporter and to him it wasn't a holy crap we're not gonna be able to buy groceries for the next week uh what did you do it was you know what babe it's okay we're gonna get through this you know this is gonna it's gonna come back to you tenfold all the money that you're spending now it's, it's gonna come right back to you and it's gonna be okay and I believe in you and you can do this if you really want to do this then I'm all in with you and of course I was like hell yeah I'm in I want Ben's I want to go on vacations. I want to do all these things. 
So I got my kit in and I was so excited. I was like, you know, 30 days to healthy living. I'm gonna lose weight. I'm gonna finally get healthy. Let me just show you guys a picture of me back then. This was me, 60 pounds heavier. This was me, I was pushing 260 pounds. I was losing hair because I was so overweight. I had no energy. I hated everything. I was managing a bar at this time and the bar lifestyle is not an easy lifestyle. I work 3 p.m. to midnight, four days a week, 3 p.m. to 1 a.m., one night a week with two days off, but really it was one day off because when you get home from the bar at four or five o'clock on Sunday morning, you know, your whole Sunday's gone. So when my kid arrived, naturally, I broke everything out and I tried it all at one time. And honestly, the only thing I really loved was the, what are they called? The fizzies, the energy drinks. They were good. The protein powder, couldn't do it. The tea, the detox tea, it was okay. It was just kind of whatever. <sighs> protein, oh man, I can't get over how much I hated protein powder. The digestion plus, the, the worst thing I'd ever tasted in my whole life. I could not believe that I had to down that every morning as a shot. I hated it. I hated it so much. And I finally got to a point where I couldn't eat it anymore. Like I couldn't, I couldn't even try. I just gave up on it entirely. So I started my 30 days and initially I was so excited. I was like, this is going to be so easy. You know, I can take a protein shake with me to work. My job is extremely time consuming and I didn't have a microwave. I literally only had fridges. So anything I brought to work had to be cold and it was perfect because protein, like protein shakes are cold. So, you know, I would take my protein shakes to work and the first few days I felt so good. I was so empowered. I was so motivated. I felt good. You know, you have that mindset of I'm about to change my life. And then a few days into it, I was exhausted. I felt terrible. I was not happy. I had shared that concern and they were like, no, 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 don't worry about it. Like that's totally normal. You know, your, your body's detoxing. No, I weighed 260 pounds and I was eating two protein shakes a day and one small meal. I was starving myself. No wonder I lost so much weight the first time I did it. The first time I did the 30 days to healthy living, I think I lost like 11 pounds, but I gained it all back immediately. Like, like, Literally, as soon as I was done and I got back to like, you know, the 80-20 lifestyle or whatever, trying to eat healthy but not on a detox, I gained it all back immediately because I was eating actual meals and not just two shakes a day and one little tiny meal and some snacks. So that was my first red flag. I was like, this kind of stinks. Right off the bat, you know, I was so excited that the sky was the limit. You know, I could earn a Benz. I could be making a six-figure income. I could be making money while I slept, you know. these. That was the goal, and it was just, you know, get past this, this hard adjustment, you know, you're, you're overweight, you're unhealthy, obviously it's going to be hard the first time, and, you know, you're going to gain some weight back, it's normal. I mean, it is normal, but, like, you don't need to do a detox to get healthy. You don't need to do a detox to lose weight. There's, that's not, that's not it, and the business side of everything. One of the biggest things with Arbonne is that they tell you if you really want your business to succeed, you will find a way. And right when I joined Arbonne, my sponsor's upline had just become a regional vice president, where in Arbonne, when you're a regional vice president, that's when you earn your free Mercedes. And when you earn your free Mercedes, you get a Benz bash. It's basically a big party where you celebrate the fact that you got your Mercedes, they have a Mercedes parked somewhere on the property and you take pictures with it and your, like that person's sponsor hands them the keys and it's a big thing. I live in Texas. And this event was being held in California. I wanted to do well in Arbonne so bad that when I heard those words, if you're still doing what you're doing now, in five years, will you be happy? And I thought about myself at the bar, no time to see Christopher. We saw each other for maybe 30 minutes on his lunch break. And then when I got home from work, he was asleep. And on Sundays, on my day off, I was asleep the whole day. And then Monday, he was at work and we'd have dinner together and that was it. I was miserable. I wanted to see my, at the time, boyfriend, now fiance. I wanted to have financial freedom. I wanted to have time with my family. I heard the words, if you really want your business to succeed, you will do what it, whatever it takes. 20 year old me said, oh my God, I have to go to California. So not even three weeks into my Arbon business, I spent a couple hundred bucks on a plane ticket to leave on Saturday night, Sunday morning, after I got off work, fly to California, get there for the party, the one day party, which I will include some pictures of here. So you, you know, you can see that I actually went to California. Yeah, the party was on Sunday. I flew out Sunday morning right after work, didn't sleep, didn't even sleep on the plane, so so excited. 
I'm way ahead of myself. Let me backtrack a little bit. At this point, I had already gone halfway to qualifying for district manager, which is the first level of management, I guess, in Arbonne. You have district manager, you have area manager, regional vice president, and national vice president. And I was already halfway to number one. And I was over the moon. I was like, if I'm already doing this good, if I go to California, I'm gonna be doing great. Could you imagine? And I remember sitting at the Benz Bash, signing someone up for Arbonne, and telling someone about it, and then all of a sudden the girls who are standing on the microphone are like, oh my God, she's signing someone up right now, look at her. Like, that's so awesome. And I'm over here like, wow, like, people are excited to like hear that I'm doing things and they're, they're happy for me, this is amazing. And I felt so good. So we stayed the night in California that night, that Sunday night, and flew home first thing next morning on Monday. Got home and immediately life went back to normal. You know, it was fun, it was cool, it was so exciting, and I got this great experience, and I had these amazing pictures and memories, and I got to share with people, like, look, this is what Arbonne can do for you, too, but Arbonne didn't pay for my plane ticket. Arbonne didn't pay for my hotel stay, or my dinner, or my lunch, or my breakfast, or my second breakfast. Arbonne didn't pay for any of that. I did, because that's what I was told it takes to make a business successful. I don't regret the experience, because honestly, I had a good time, it was fun. I feel like a lot of the why I quit Arbonne videos are from people who never made any money and that's not me. I made money. I made back my initial investment and I made it back a little bit more than that and it was a good feeling. I really thought I was going to go somewhere with Arbonne and the people that were above me really thought so too and they believed in me so hard and they was, hey, you know, you haven't made a sale in a few days. What's going on? Have you... Have you reached out to all 100 people on your 100 person list? Whenever you sign up, they ask you to write a list of 100 names of people that you think might be interested in hearing about the Arbonne opportunity, Arbonne opportunity, and reach out to all 100 of them. No, that felt weird. I didn't like messaging people. I didn't like saying, hey, I think you'd be a great fit for my team, because I don't know this girl. On some of our weekly meetings, we were told to go through your Instagram Explore page, find someone who has a really cute feed that you like to look at and message them. You know, follow them, interact with them for a little bit before you message them first, that way they, you know, create a friendship and then go for the sale. It felt icky. It felt kind of icky. And so I started Arbon in October and I went district manager in November. So I, immediately got there and I was like wow I'm really doing this I can do this and I felt so confident and so sure of myself and then I found out that if you didn't buy a certain amount you wouldn't make your commission if you didn't sell a certain amount within one month you didn't get the the bonuses that come with being a district manager just because you made it doesn't mean you're gonna get paid like it so all the stress is on you know I made it to district manager can I keep my title can I hit this certain number? You know, it's Christmas time. Who's gonna be buying health, fitness detoxes during Christmas time? Nobody, nobody. It's really hard to sit here and film this because I wanna just talk about my journey and my story, but I kinda of have to break down Arbonne for it. So when you become national vice president, every single person who has signed up underneath you and everyone they've signed up and they've signed up and they've signed up and so on and so forth, you earn money off of them, and they are now in your nation. So I was in a specific nation, and they hosted a Christmas party. But to be able to attend the Christmas party, you had to have a certain rank be by a certain date, otherwise you weren't invited. You were only invited if you actually qualified. So, of course, I was like, I'm gonna do everything I can to qualify. Absolutely. And I did. I went to the Christmas party, picture perfect, and it made so much sense why they had this huge following and they were so successful in Arbonne. And here is, I'll show you a picture of me from the Christmas party, wondering, where do I fit in in all of this? I don't look like any of these girls. If I have to look like these girls to be successful, I'm never gonna be successful. I was only a district manager and there was plenty of NVPs and RVPs and ENVPs there and nobody gave a crap about me. I'm not saying that people weren't nice to me, like, you know, people were nice to me and stuff. Like, I, I was not mistreated. I just didn't feel like that was the place for me. So the entire, oh, I forgot to mention this. This is in Dallas. I drove four hours to get to this Christmas party. So that's when I kind of started like leaning away from it. And I'm not gonna lie and say I wasn't successful a little bit because I was. You know, I've already said this, I earned back my initial investment, I earned a little bit more, whatever. Christmas passes and the GTC or the Global Training Conference tickets were released or pre-sailed or whatever. The Global Training Conference is a basically a big 
party and award shows. And again, if you want to be successful, you will be there. If I'm going to Vegas, my fiance is coming with me. So not only would I have to pay for the tickets to get in to GTC, I would have to pay for airfare to get to Vegas. I would have to pay for a hotel. They, the GTC is hosted at the NGM Grand. I couldn't, I couldn't bunk with someone because that was still too expensive. We bought the tickets. We did the installment payments because there's no way in hell we could have afforded that. I mean, it was Christmas time. We had just gotten engaged. We started looking at wedding stuff and we just, you know, I got a message from one of my uplines and they were like, hey, I saw that you have, um, you know, X amount of uh, QV or PQV, you know, you've signed other people up, but you won't get paid if you don't buy things yourself. If you had to have so many QV, PQV or whatever it was of your own purchase, that means not only have I paid the $50 sign-up fee, you know, my over $300 first order, all the other orders I placed since then, my trip to California, the supposed trip to Vegas that we were planning, the trip to Dallas, every other thing that I had to pay for, now I have to buy even more products that I don't really care for. I don't have this money and it absolutely killed me because when I would say, I don't have the money for that. I can't afford that. I don't have a credit card that I can just throw shit on and say, okay, worry about this later. I, don't, I, I didn't do that. You know, I worked for everything I had and if I wanted something nice for myself, I had to put it on the back burner because I had to buy things for Arbonne so I would get paid. I just wanna say before we get into this, and uh, this is in no way meant to be shady or anything, but up until a few days ago, I was still in all of the Arbonne Facebook groups. I was in all the nation pages. I was in the region pages. I never removed myself from the groups because I just, you know, it was, I was scrolling through Facebook and I would see one every once in a while. Whatever, whatever, it didn't matter. I posted it on my Instagram stories, which is actually why we're filming this video today. I asked my followers um, out of three different videos, what were they most interested in seeing? And why I quit Arbonne, won by a freaking landslide. The following day, I was removed from the Facebook groups. And quite a few of my uplines still follow me on Instagram, so I know that they saw it, and it kind of just makes me think that that was the reason I was removed. Maybe they were holding on hope that I would join them again someday, and I'm gonna let y'all do what you want with that information, but uh, after I said that I was gonna be making a video about why I quit Arbonne, I was immediately removed from any sort of Arbonne-related Facebook group. And not that it makes a difference to my life, but so, Around January, I kind of realized that this isn't what I want. I had stuck with it for a few months, you know, I had made it to a title, I had made some money, and I had made friends, and I'd had some really fun experiences, but I just didn't like the products. I didn't want to stick with it. I didn't want to do it. And so I just stopped. I stopped posting about it. I stopped using it. It kind of just, it, it hit the backseat. Like, I, I hit the brakes and, oh, man, I'm getting a little... I, I just feel bad. Like I said, I got engaged in December of 2018. That was two months into my Arbonne journey. And I remember looking at myself one day, probably around the beginning of January and saying, if you look like this on your wedding day, you are going to regret this. You are so unhappy and you will be so miserable every time you look at your wedding photos, if you let yourself look like this on your wedding day. I knew that Arbonne wasn't really working for me. So I was determined to find something that did. And I got my ass to the gym every day and I was eating really good and I was doing all the things that I needed to do for me. And like I said, I will make a completely separate video about my weight loss journey because it's a whole other thing, but I hadn't touched an Arbonne product in weeks, months even. Like I, by the time that I had lost a significant amount of weight, I had not used Arbonne in probably months. And this is kind of when shit hit the fan. This is what, this, what we're about to talk about, this is what made me leave Arbonne because this is what absolutely freaking broke me. I lost a very significant amount of weight relatively quickly and truthfully, every pound that I lost while I was using Arbonne, I gained back as soon as I was done with my 30 days or when I gave up my 30 days. So really in about January when I first really started working on myself, doing it the way I wanted to do it and not the way Arbonne was telling me that I needed to do it, I was about the exact same weight that I was when I started. When I was at my absolute heaviest, I was pushing 260 pounds. And I wanna say in January, I was probably floating at 250 to 255. So really not much of a difference. I mean, I think I had gotten into like the 240s around then, like by the time I got, like when I got engaged, I was like 248 pounds. Like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That is not how I felt good. And that is not what I wanted for myself. So it wasn't, it wasn't working for me and I needed to change. So I did, I made the changes, I lost the weight, I did the damn thing. And 
I was so unbelievably proud of myself and I couldn't wait to share my transformation pictures with the world. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and post them right here. Here you go. Yeah, I did that. That's awesome. That's so freaking awesome. I still have a ways to go and I will never deny that, but I did that. One day I had posted a picture about how, oh, that's what it was. It was a, I bought these jeans in December as a gold pair of jeans and they fit me now. And my sponsor reached out to me and she was like, oh my God, you look amazing. You're going to look so great at your wedding. Can you share with me one of your transformation photos? Like a real side by side one. And I was like, yeah, like this one's really cool. And so I sent it to her and she was like, oh my God, like that's insane. You look amazing. I can't believe you did that. I'm so proud of you. You know, that's so great. Can I share this? At first, I was like, what do you mean share it? I don't remember the exact words that were said. I don't have the screenshots. I remember saying, I guess, but it doesn't feel right because I haven't used Arbonne in months. My weight loss had nothing to do with Arbonne. And the response I got blew me away. And that's when I kind of realized, screw this. Screw this so hard. I want nothing to do with this. Um, the response was something along the lines of, that's okay, no one will really know, you can still use it to promote your business. What? You want, me to, you want me to lie? You want me to say that all the hard work that I put in for months, all of the, the hours I spent in the gym, the hours I spent educating myself on how to properly fuel my body and take care of myself, you want me to lie and say that's because of Arbonne? Absolutely not. That's where I drew the line. I was like, this is not okay with me. And I wish I would have said, you know what, never mind, you don't have my permission to share these because it would have saved me a lot of heartache and a lot of frustration. Because the second it hit the internet, it went everywhere. And I'm not mad at her for this. It's whatever. I have, I hold no hate towards her. Seriously, I truly love her as a person. This specific instance just hurt me on another level because I've spent my entire life overweight. I spent my entire life dieting, detoxing, fad diets, everything you could think of to lose weight and I couldn't do it. And then I finally learned how to do it right. And I was so damn proud and it was taken away from me in seconds. I wish I still had the screenshots because I had so many story mentions and tags and comments and so many things saying like, Wow, that's amazing. Look at what Arbonne did for this girl. Look at what Arbonne can do for her. If Arbonne can do this for her, Arbonne can do it for you. Wow, your business is gonna take off. Your business is gonna do so well because you're an Arbonne success story. Arbonne changed your life and Arbonne can, if, if Arbonne can change her life, it can change your life too. And I'm sitting here like, Arbonne who? Arbonne what? That was me. That was all me. I did that. I went to the gym. I ate the right foods. I didn't eat a damn protein shake. I wasn't taking the digestion plus. I wasn't drinking the fizzies. I was doing everything the right way without spending $300 for a one month supply of stuff that you're, st you're still have to buy groceries. You still have to buy groceries. You can't live off that. And uh, $300 a month was my grocery limit. So, no, my journey and my success story had nothing to do with Arbonne. And to this day, to this day, my photos are still circulating the internet as an Arbonne success story. Hundreds and hundreds of women have seen these honestly intimate photos of myself in my underwear and I mean I'm sharing them with the world now so whatever but and every single ounce of dedication and commitment and hard work that I poured into myself was stripped away by one post because now to God knows how many people my hard work and everything that I did is nothing but an Arbonne success story. When truthfully, my real weight loss and transformation had nothing to do with Arbonne. And that is why I left. 
because I even told people, hey, can you please take that picture down? That picture is my personal success story, not an Arbonne success story. Hey, I haven't used Arbonne in months. Would you mind taking that picture down? Hey, I don't feel comfortable with you having my picture on your story. Can you please take it down? I can't tell you how many of those messages I sent and the shame that I felt for allowing her to share the photos, it was my fault for the longest time. I blamed myself for it and I was so mad at me for allowing them to be released. And I was mad at myself for sending them to her, but I wanted to share them with somebody who was gonna understand what it felt like to be so damn proud of yourself, you know? Everything that I did was taken away from me. And it made me feel so small. It made me feel like everything I did didn't matter. And the only reason I'm making this video today is because I'm finally at a place where I can tell myself all that hard work, everything that I did, what I taught myself about how to properly fuel and love and nurture your body to you know, create this healthy from the inside out person, that matters. What I did for me and me only matters. As heartbreaking as it was and as frustrating as my experience with Arvon was, despite the fact that I made it look so fun and easy and awesome on Instagram, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for the people I met, truly. I've met some of the most amazing women I've ever met in my whole life through Arvon, and I'm grateful for them every day. Jenny, I'm talking to you, I love you, babe. Mm -hmm. You're my favorite. I made amazing memories and yeah, those trips were expensive and should I have gone on them? No, I had no business doing that. I, I put myself in a financial burden rather than getting this financial freedom like I was expecting. This is my story. For me, Arbonne just wasn't it. It didn't, it felt like high school all over again. One thing that I also really want to mention is once I hit district manager and I was so proud and I was promoting myself online, I'll never forget the feeling I felt when I read the tweet from a girl that I went to high school with saying, how the hell are you gonna be selling weight loss products when you're still fat? Why am I gonna buy weight loss supplements from a fat girl? How can you preach about a healthy lifestyle when you look like this? I was berated online by girls who were not nice to me when I was younger anyways, because I was trying to do something good for myself. Just to take away from that, just be kind. We're adults now. That wasn't necessary. Did you want to hear about how you made me cry? Did you, did you need that satisfaction? Because here you go. You got what you needed. Congratulations. I think that about wraps it up, you guys. If you want to hear my weight loss story, leave me a comment. Let me know. I'd love to share these things with you guys. But today's video was simply about me sharing my journey and what happened to me. And just to wrap things up in a little bit of a more happy note, I just got a text that was really, really, really exciting about a future video, potential future video. All of my fingers are crossed. I'm so excited and I really hope that this opportunity actually happens because it would be so cool and so fun to share with y'all. So fingers crossed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.